The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note, the new number is... Well, of course you don't need glasses. Those eyes are blue and clear. And I don't need them either. When you're lying so near. And you're looking to the future. And I hope it's where we are. But I can't tell, I can't see that far. And I'm dying to claim it. But I don't have any proof. Not to say it, then there's something to look forward to. Cause though I do it sincerely, I can't say it with a smile. I'll just have to tell you after a while. One, two, three, all eyes on me. And we are out here at the Johnson County Fairgrounds for what a load of crap. Number eight, hundreds of people are out here today to check out all the vendors making all kinds of neat, handmade, craft delicious bounty for the holiday season. I'm wearing long sleeves today because I'm the only person here without a tattoo, and they wouldn't let me in otherwise. But they're nice folks. I'm glad to call many of them my friends. Let's go inside and talk to some of them. And we're here with two people who are very familiar faces to anybody in the crafting scene in Iowa City. It's Grace and Susan. This is your baby. Thank you so very much. It's the eighth year. How has it grown over time to this big spectacle, this craftacle that it is today? Yeah, well, we, um, we started out in the Hall Mall um, with very few vendors. Um, it was a pretty small event, and we moved into the Picador, um, got a little bit bigger, and then uh, realized we were bursting at the seams. Um, at the Picador, now it's Gabe's, uh, formerly the Picador, and so we decided we needed a bigger venue, and we thought Johnson County Fairgrounds was where it's at. So it's kind of exploded in the last few years, and we're really happy with the, the size, and there's so many more vendors we can have here is really great. I think, too, in the years that we've done it, the whole uh, handmade scene has gotten way bigger so it's you know we've needed this much space where before you know it was harder to fill space um, and we also have a lot more help putting on the fair now um, we have Chris Starleaf and Ramona Muse and Courtney from White Rabbit so our team has grown and just the whole craft community has grown to be able to support it we're very lucky I tell the folks at home where they can find out if they see this and like, yeah, I want to find out who that was. What's your uh, what's your web info? Sure. So um, we of course have the requisite Facebook page, um, which is um, if you just search on Facebook for What a Load of Craft. Um, we also have a website, whatalotofcraft.com, um, and that is um, updated somewhat frequently. But our Facebook page is definitely updated very frequently, so that's a good place to get information. Well, listen, thanks again so much on behalf of all of Iowa City for putting on this rocking event, eight years running. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Check one, two. And we're here with Courtney and Lindsay, familiar faces to anybody who's part of the craft or handmade uh, item scene here in Iowa City. They're both from White Rabbit, which not only do they create and sell their own stuff, they also uh, give a brick and mortar location for a lot of these crafters to sell their wares, which is really important. Tell us, uh, this is the eighth year of What a Load of Craft. I imagine you guys have been part of it since the beginning. Uh, tell us how you think the fair's grown. Every year I come, it's more and more vendors, new folks, bigger stuff. What's your experience of it been like? Well, I have been around since the very beginning, and at first we started in the Hall Mall, so this, of course, is just so much bigger and more well attended. Um, so yeah, we're just really happy with the turnout and that we had good weather this year, and the vendors just keep getting better and better every year. So yeah, it's a, it's a great thing to support. Um, you kind of vote with your money this time of year, and so spending money locally always does uh, the local economy a lot better. So. Yeah. There's a few vendors I've seen year after year after year, but also one of my favorite things is that there's new vendors each year. What, if any, new vendors have you seen this year that you're really excited about? 
Well, this is my first year of doing What a Load of Craft, so I'm just excited to participate. I haven't really gotten a chance to walk around, but so far everything looks great. And um, yeah, just hope everyone has a good time. <laughs> So in addition to uh, creating and selling your own stuff, it's also a great uh, opportunity, uh, White Rabbit is, for other crafters to sell stuff. If people who want to find out uh, more about you, what you do, even maybe how to sell their stuff at your place, uh, and they can't get out here today, uh, how can they get a hold of you guys online? WhiteRabbitGallery.com, and they should all the information should be right there. But yeah, we're always looking for new artists and designers to sell stuff at the store, so... Yeah. And now you can come by and get a cup of coffee, too, which is, I'm in there quite a bit to visit Jarrett. Well, listen, ladies, thanks so much for talking with us. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. We are here talking with a couple of folks from Up in Arms. They're from here in Iowa City, but this is their first year at Water Load of Craft. Uh, tell us who you are. Tell the folks at home uh, what it is that uh, you make. Well, we screen print our own t-shirts with our designs and some of the designs are from our friends and we like to make a nice eclectic mix of them and, and that's what we do. And how did you find out about uh, What a Load of Craft? Uh, we sell our shirts in White Rabbit store downtown and so we met a lot of the, the people that are involved with it through that. Uh, Grace, you know, works down there and she told us about it and, you know, said that we should get into it and it sounded like a great idea. And what's your experience of this year's craft fair been like? It's been a lot busier than we anticipated. We made a lot of sales and we're really proud of that. And everyone seems to like it. It is a, it is a big crowd this year. Uh, it seems like it's growing year by year by year. Absolutely, yeah. We want to be back for this. Uh, we're going with White Rabbit and hopefully we'll launch off and do some more craft fairs around the Midwest with this. Well, they're, they're all about people coming in, as you guys are, even though you're local. A lot of folks I've never seen before, they've come in from as far away as Des Moines. So best of luck to you, and uh, I hope you find your way onto the craft circuit. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. I can't remember your name. Oh, it's okay. We are here talking with... Carissa, who's made a lot of really interesting handmade jewelry. You may also know her. She, like so many of the folks that we've talked to today, uh, works at White Rabbit. So I have the pleasure of seeing her now and again when I go in for coffee. Tell us, Carissa, about your uh, work, what you're making, and uh, how long you've been doing it. Um, I make jewelry. It's okay, uh, I make jewelry. I've been making it since probably around 2002. Um, I'm inspired by nature, music, geometry. Etc. Friends, um, mostly necklaces and earrings currently, but occasionally bracelets and whatnot. I'm looking to move um, my next phase into actually doing the metal smithing. So, when you're making stuff like this, what are the uh, production like? I mean, some of it, it looks like it's pieces that you may have like gotten already cut, but some of it, I don't know. Maybe you're cutting together. You talked about metal smithing. What's it like just in a production? Do you have a shop someplace in town, or is this stuff you can do at home? This is, I work on it at home. I have a craft room at home, but I actually sit in the living room and I drag everything out. Um, and I just kind of work on it while I watch Netflix. Um, most of the pieces come pre, like as supplies. Some of the things I've etched and some of them I've embroidered with thread. And then some things I cut apart. I also use vintage, you know, necklaces and stuff like that and take them apart and just use the components. But yeah, with the metal smithing in the future, I'd like to get where I'm taking it from a piece of metal to a completed product. Uh, what's good Netflix selections for people at home uh, making crafts? I watch a lot of Roseanne, honestly. Uh, stuff that's uh, lighthearted. Sometimes documentaries, but those can be a little challenging. Just kind of different TV shows and series. And I've seen Roseanne all the way through. I just started over. Well, listen, thanks uh, so much for talking with us, and best of luck. Uh, with your endeavors this afternoon and well into the future. We look forward to seeing you uh, making a lot more stuff. Great, thank you so much. You want to do it? Happy Hanukkah, Iowa City. I may not be the only Jew in Johnson County. We're here with Liz Munger from the Paper Nest, and she is selling all kinds of neat stuff made from paper. Tell us, Liz, 
how long you've been doing this, and what's the production that goes into making these neat prints and cards that you have? Oh, uh, I've been running the business for two years, and uh, it's all handmade letterpress prints. Um, I have a large press, and so I set it up with uh, wood blocks or photopolymer plates, and then run paper through it. That's something I've seen a lot, uh, both here at What a Load of Craft today, but also at other book fairs. You know, everybody talks about Iowa City being this book-centric city of literature. Uh, but in addition to just writing, it seems like there's a lot of small presses and people making really unique handmade uh, prints, handmade books and stuff like that. Is that uh, something that you think is coming around a resurgence nationally or just around here in this neck of the woods? I think it's nationwide. I feel like there's a resurgence in letterpress. I, you know, I think along with the DIY scene that that's kind of part of it. And since a lot of these presses have are selling, you know, a lot of people are getting rid of print shops and selling presses. So lots of people are buying presses and reappropriating them for art, more artistic use than what they originally planned for. So I think it's really being coming integrated into the community. So even though uh, letter pressing and the DIY scene when it comes to paper is a little more old school, I imagine uh, in the year 2011 you probably have a website or something like that. Folks at home, uh, they want to find out more about what you do. Where can they find out about you online? Uh, at thepapernestpress.com. So, yeah, I do have a website. <laughs> Timid women don't make six digit figures. So the loose pillar to the tight knitter. You can be a big right in the meat market and they'll spit out a heart with nothing hidden in it. I fired men twice my size, they cowered at the power of my menses. I've been estranged from my mom so long, she thought of me as just a list of expenses. She look at me, I dropped a stitch around the armpit when you bitch and put a crack in your defenses. job and through the mafia got involved and found the deals ran so deep they piped up sap into the tree of deceit and I insisted that the contracts were resisted but a man was enlisted to force me into this decision to move back to the heartland to care of my mother and I signed up for this class and my daughter-in-law's a pain in the ass she cringes at my craftsmen she curls up her lashes she's a lace and set and set she's she's gonna get her ass kicked Before you get your bottle of beers, I'm gonna tell it to you clear and I molly coddle you anymore. When they say they're granting everything that you were asking, and it's just a game you're playing, this is what they're really saying. Oh, daughter, oh, daughter, we'll dress you up for the slaughter. There's eyes like X heads in your. You'll never get that six digit timid women don't fidget. Timid women don't fidget. You'll never get that six digit timid women don't fidget. This is a man who's uh, no stranger to anyone who watches PATV or lives in Iowa City. In fact, uh, his name's probably come up a number of times in various uh, conversations today, talking with folks uh, when they're raving about White Rabbit. And I tell them I know that place because I go in there to get a chai latte about three, four times a week. And this is the man that makes them. Jared Mitchell, nice to see you again. Tell us uh, what you've been doing out here this afternoon and uh, how you became a part of uh, What a Load of Craft this year. Well, Gail, I've been out here this afternoon, uh, of course, selling coffee, selling Millstream locally made sodas, root beer, cream soda, uh, and selling my locally roasted coffee as well. 
I got involved here with uh, what a load of craft crew, Grace, uh, who also works at White Rabbit. She's one of the uh, people who's put together this great event. And I was given the opportunity to come out here and be the beverage distributor, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's a great day. In addition to your duties here, uh, singing coffee and root beer and such, uh, there was a guy who looked an awful lot like you, except he had a white beard and, and some red clothes on a little while ago. Uh, was, tell me the, the truth now. Was that you, or was that somebody who just looked a lot like you? That was the real Santa Claus. It really, truly was. He was here. Uh, there was a jingle jangle. There was a little knock on the roof. And then he appeared, and uh, he was here giving out candy for just a minute. Yeah. But he left you with his hat. He left me with his hat. He's a good man. He's a compassionate man, not unlike myself. Oh, oh Ryan, let's see. Do you have a nice belt on today? That's just a joke about the stars. Uh, what would you like for Christmas? Well, listen, Jared, best of luck uh, with everything. I uh, hope that uh, a Wake Up Iowa City keeps going strong, and thanks for talking with us this afternoon. Great. Thanks so much, y'all. I'd like to say, too, uh, I'm not even a monotheist, and I'm here today. You know, I believe in the pantheon of Greek gods, and uh, still I'm here today with everybody else supporting Christmas. So get out that Yule log, and uh, let's have some fun. BATV, it's beer and serious discussions of religion. And we are talking with Brittany, the owner and purveyor of Artie Bias, maker of fine scarves like the one I have on right now with a monkey. I love monkeys. Tell us, uh, Brittany, tell us about your business. And besides the scarves, I see you have a lot of hand-printed little notebooks and things like that here. And what brought you into the craft scene? Great. Well, this is my third year at What a Load of Craft, and um, I do a lot of screen printed designs, necklaces, uh, cards, that type of thing. And I got into it because I have a kind of serious day job. I'm a technology manager for a company, and so this is my release. I like to make things for people, and I like to come here, and I love to see how the kids react to the different products and what people choose and what they love. So it's a good opportunity to just hang out and get to know people. So you've been doing this, you said this is your third What a Load of Craft. How long have you been, I have a feeling you were probably a creative person doing this kind of thing, even if not for sale, uh, for some time. What was it that helped you or decided to cross the threshold and actually uh, going out there and selling your wares to folks? That's a great question. Um, I don't know, just one year I decided that, you know, I spent all this time making things and I used to just give everything as gifts and people were like, oh, we really love this. And so what I would, I thought, well, maybe people will want to buy my stuff, so... There's folks at home, they want to buy a monkey scarf. Maybe they want to buy even this monkey scarf, just because I had it on, on TV. Uh, how can they find you online and uh, see where you are, what you're doing, and uh, what kind of stuff you have for sale? Perfect. Yeah, I have an Etsy shop. It's uh, bnothan at Etsy, or bnothanetsy.com. Custom Pet Portraits. Elisa uh, is her name, and why don't you tell us about your uh, company and what kind of art you make here for people. Okay, um, I'm from Home Ec Workshop. We have a store in Iowa City, and um, we've been doing uh, these pet portraits. Um, I've been working on them along with Cody Josephson, the other owner of our shop. And people can bring us a photo of their pet, and we... Um, use a sewing machine but like free motion so you're kind of sketching with thread to create the pet and then um, people can pick their own wallpaper fabric background and the different frames that they want and they're screen printed and they're stretched around canvas and then we hand embroider the name of the animal underneath. A lot of times with more traditional portraiture like painting and stuff uh, the artist will make uh, the subject maybe look a little younger, a little thinner, have a little more hair. If somebody has a, a cat or a dog that maybe is not so portraitgenic, uh, will you uh, improve uh, the animal's looks in the art that you make? Well, we try and be true to is, you know, their, their personality, but we're open to requests since they are custom made. And if people want to get a hold of you and get a portrait of their cat or dog or bird or fish done, how can they uh, find you? You can find us at Home Ec Workshop. We're at 207 North Lynn Street in Iowa City. Um, they could call us, 319-337-4775. Email us, homeecworkshop at yahoo.com. Thanks for talking to us, Elisa. Good luck.
we are here with Jillian Moore. She's got all these fascinating, amazing, handmade, they look like a lot of them glass, hand-blown, uh, jewelry, rings, uh, maybe necklaces and earrings. Tell us, Jillian, uh, how, what are these things and how did you make them? Um, they're actually made with foam, polymer, clay, and resin. Um, I work pretty much entirely with plastics and metal. What's that like production-wise? What goes into making some of these very unique uh, things that you have on for sale here today? Um, I usually layer the foam or the, the polymer clay with resin and paint. So my studio is kind of messy and sort of looks like a bad science lab. I expect that holds true for a lot of folks in Iowa, whether they're making crafts or even making meth. I don't know. But how long have you uh, been doing this and what's your experience in the craft scene here in Iowa City? And if the folks at home want to find out more about your stuff, is there a way they can find out uh, who you are and what you're making and, and where to buy it online? Uh, my website is jillianmore.net and it links to my Etsy site. I also sell at White Rabbit and Modella in town. Well, listen, Jillian, thanks so much for talking with us today and we wish you all the best of luck. Thank you very much. That wasn't too painful, was it? here talking with Paige Harwell from Drainbow Land, purveyor and maker of these great and amazing handmade necklaces that all, just like the one I'm wearing right now with a moth in it, have what I can only assume are local indigenous Iowa insects and bugs. Tell us, Paige, about your business and where you got the idea for this. Um, well, Drainbow Land is me doing the best that I can, um, trying to make people look cool with jewelry and accessories. Um, I also make like miniature paintings, but I guess it came about, I really like the, um, the piece in Jurassic Park, the amber, you know, the mosquito in it, and I've always been really attracted to that, and so I started making these, collecting the bugs, all the bugs are dead when I find them. Uh, well listen Paige, uh, it's really neat stuff that you make, and thanks so much for talking with us this afternoon. Thank you. We are here looking at some handmade scarves, like the beautiful one I'm wearing right now, from Weft Shot. We're talking with Allie. Allie, tell us about your business, how long you've been making scarves and stuff like this, and uh, what brought you into the do-it-yourself crafting community? Um, I started making scarves probably in 2004. Uh, I work out of my home here in Iowa City on my loom. Um, it's a lot like this one here. Um, and then just... You know, I have a lot of friends that are involved in this and just kind of got pushed me into it and it's turn, been a great turnout. It seems like crafting has really changed over the last 8, 10, 12 years where it used to be a lot of like, you know, blue-haired old grandmothers selling boring Christmassy stuff and now it's all hip, young, cool people with tats and piercings and everything neat. How did that transformation uh, change, do you think? People are, you know, getting into just the style and the craft and what you can do with it and um, just kind of revamping it, reinventing it to something that can be catered to a younger crowd. Um, it's not so much grandmas anymore, although I've seen quite a few here today, so that's been great. And for all we know, some of these grandmothers, they may have tats of their own. We don't know. But thanks so much for talking with this alley, talking on behalf of all young people in America here today at What a Load of Craft, number eight. And we're here with Danny from ne Nemesis Tattoo. Uh, when he talks to us in a minute, no, there's nothing wrong with our mic. Apparently, he's from Long Island in New York City, so he's, uh, he might have a little bit of accent coming through. Tell us, Danny, what is a tattoo parlor doing with a table at a craft fair? Um, I've always thought tattoos are more of a craft than an art anyway, just the way that we have to go about doing it. It's a little bit more hands-on. Um, plus, we're selling a whole bunch of artwork and frame prints and stuff like that. So, you know, I think we kind of fit in here. Clearly, you're a fan of tattoos yourself. It seems like uh, there's hardly anybody I know these days that doesn't have one or 50 tattoos. Uh, what's behind this, like, tattoo resurgence in the last 10 years or so? I don't know. I just think the I started about 11 years ago, and it definitely wasn't as popular as it was now. I always ask my barbers, you know, hey, who cuts your hair? So as a tattoo guy with a whole bunch of tats yourself, who does your tats? 
Um, mainly at the shops I've worked in previously. And you're here in Iowa City. Somebody wants to uh, come on in and uh, get a tattoo, design a tattoo. Uh, where can they find you? Uh, Nemesis Tattoo at 385 East College Street in Iowa City. And we're here with Ashley. I came over here because I just saw my friend Lauren a little while ago. She's wearing this really neat pin with an octopus on it. And I says, what's that? She said, he's over in the corner. So I came over here expecting to interview an octopus. But instead, it's Ashley, and she's selling these octopuses. Tell us, Ashley, uh, what's the name of your business, and what's the story uh, behind all these little cute uh, octopuses you have around? Well, my business name is Jane Danger. Um, the stuffed animals started as Christmas gifts for my family and kind of spread from there. And who, who, are, who are the uh, demographic that octopuses are popular with? The kids like octopuses, or is there some kind of a irony to having a, a plush octopus that I've never seen before? There is an irony. A lot of kids who like steampunk really like them, um, teenagers especially. Yeah. So they're, they're plushies for uh, hipsters? Yep. Perfect. Excellent. And if people aren't here today and they want to find out where they can get one of these, how can they uh, find you online? It's just janedanger.com. It's J-A-Y-N-E, danger.com. Well, listen, Ashley, thanks so much for talking to us, and good luck with the octopuses. Thank you. And we're here at What a Load of Craft 27 because clearly this amazing technology that Ramona is using right now to swipe a credit card on her iPhone could not exist in the year 2011, but I could be wrong. I need to ask this woman if she wants me to email her a receipt. What? Yeah. And tell us about uh, the stuff that you've brought out here to sell today with your amazing futuristic iPhone. Uh, it's, not, it's, a, it's a droid. Uh, and I made a lot of infinity scarves, and so it's essentially like a tube, and they're all different lengths and widths, and um, so they're, some are more ornamental than others, or some are warmer than others, and I also made some funny hats with cats on them. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of folks might recognize you, because you're part of Leslie and the Lies, the greatest craft-centric band in Iowa. We do have a lot of songs about crafting. Tell us how you got uh, involved in that and what's that experience been like for you? Um, well, I graduated from college and, and then I was in the band. It's not that exciting. It's one of those things where if you meet an eccentric person who does a lot of projects and you just say, yeah, I'll help you with your projects, they love that. And then. You're just the guy that holds the camera all the time, and then eventually they'll make you put on a yellow vinyl costume, even though you don't know all the words. So for the kids watching at home, if they want to break into the craft scene, the performance scene, uh, what I'm hearing from you is that it would behoove them to come and volunteer their time with you, uh, helping out in a little way, and then they can move up uh, the trajectory and become part of the Iowa City rock and roll craft scene. Wait, no, I'm old. I'm... I'm over, man. I mean, like, I'm still making stuff, but make your own stuff, and then when your friend is annoying you because they have so many projects, just power through it, and they're going to do something that's going to blow your mind. That's what I'm saying. Those friends that keep bugging you and getting you into stuff, I'm and at some point, you're like, why, why, why? That's why. Because then a bunch of people actually saw it. You heard it here. You heard it here first, folks, the wisdom of Ramona. Ramona, thanks so much for talking with us. And Thank you very much. And we're here with Danny from Danny Awesome. Uh, tell us, Danny, it looks like you're in the hair clip business, like the one I, uh, I'm wearing right now. Yeah. What, uh, what's the hair clip business like? It's doing well. It's doing very well. I'm finding a lot of people that are buying them for gifts, but also just for fun holiday events and for everyday wear. So going very well. And there are many ways to wear your feathers. We have earrings and brooches and pendants and all kinds of good stuff. Well, I think I read someplace that like after fast food, pornography, and the mafia, hair clips are recession-proof uh, industry. Totally. But uh, what, uh, how long have you been doing it? 
Um, for about three years, I started, um, I made uh, hair clips for a friend's wedding, and it sort of sprung from, I was in an Urban Outfitters in Arizona, and they had hair clips that were just beat up and super expensive, and I thought, that's crap, I can do better than that, so that's what I started to do, and I focus on affordable and high quality. And is this your first appearance here at the What a Load of Craft uh, Craft Fair? This is my first time at What a Load of Craft. This is my first outside of Des Moines craft show, and I'm loving it. It's really great. Wow, well, welcome to it. And if folks uh, aren't here uh, to personally try on your wares, as I am now, and they want to take a look at what you have, do you have a website, something online people can uh, track you down and take a look at your stuff? I do. I have an Etsy site. It's Danny Awesome is my name. It's D-A-N-I-A-W-E-S-O-M-E dot Etsy dot com. And now I know uh, next time I need a hair clip, I know where to get it. Absolutely. Thanks. The year is 2011. We are all here. We are now going to draw games to see who gets to participate in this year's Craft Death Match 2012. And we're here with people who are no strangers to any regular watchers of PETV. Some of the gals from Glitter Mafia, they're my personal uh, dresser. I, I won't wear any, any clothes on television that weren't made by them. Uh, tell us, ladies, this is uh, the eighth What a Load of Craft Fair. You've been a part of it for a while and a big part of the crafting community. What's your experience of this year's event been like? I think this is probably the busiest event we've ever been involved with. As far as foot traffic goes, it's been really busy today, and everybody's in really good mood, so it's, it's been a fun day. And also joining at the table is hairstylist extraordinaire. I've pleaded, pleaded for years for her to work on me. She says, Yale, I'm sorry. You simply don't have enough hair for me to do anything with. But uh, she's also making these great, what are these even called? It's Joanne Larpender Sinclair, for the folks at home who don't know who she is. Tell us about these great headbands that you're making. The name of your business is Pretty Kitty. <laughs> They're technically called fascinators, and um, it's sort of a cross between like a hair accessory and a hat. It's not as heavy as a hat. Um, you can wear it without having to pin it. Um, and they're just really fun. Like, they're made out of millinery supplies, and for those of you that don't know, um, millinery is hat making. So I'm using traditional um, hat making supplies and making headbands, basically. Um, they're really easy to wear, they're really light, and it's kind of a fun way to accessorize your wardrobe. And then I also um, make jewelry, and I made uh, these fake fur stoles this year, and Heather also made, he made headbands, and we've got a lot of different things going on. Hiding in the corner, of course, is Heather Atkinson, always, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. I think the royal wedding has brought about a new interest in fascinators, especially the daughters of uh, Sarah, Duchess of York, who wore the big crazy. Kind of examples of uh, what not to do as well. What not to do or what to do to get attention. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it too. So two pro, one con. I just I liked didn't like it. the tan one. The camel colored one did, loved not, it. did not work Love for me. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Uh, uh, uh. 
But for the folks who aren't here today, tell the folks at home where they can find out about your businesses and all the great stuff you make online. Uh, you can go to my website, heatheratkinson.com. You can go to my Facebook page, which is Glitter Mafia Derby Gear, or you can go to glittermafia.com. You can find me on Etsy, um, and my username is Pretty Kitty Joanne. Well, listen, ladies, thanks so very much for talking with us this afternoon. We hope you have a wonderful day. And we are here standing in front of Industrial Glitter with Amber and Kelly. Tell us, uh, I've seen you guys around at a lot of craft fairs. Seems like you've been doing it for a while. Tell us, uh, first of all, tell us about these outfits of yours. Is this an accident that you both wore the same thing today? Is one of you going to be embarrassed now, or was this a choice? Totally a choice. We kind of wanted to have a theme this year, and it's a Japanese Christmas explosion here with our Lolita dresses. Japanese Christmas explosion. It wasn't that a, a Gwen Stefani album, or was that some? <laughs> what? Uh, so tell us, in, what is what is for the folks at home? What is industrial glitter all about? Um, we make a lot of stuff with fabric, mostly. Uh, we have the bunting and the plushy dolls and stuff like that. So. Just things that are bright colored and cute. That's basically what we focus on. Uh, how long have you been uh, doing the handmade craft scene here? About five years, I would say. And have you always been in, in partnership together, or did you uh, kind of find each other when you were working independently and then like team up, like the Wonder Twins of, of the craft scene? We actually grew up about 20 minutes apart our whole lives, but we didn't meet until about five years ago. And uh, we both started working at the Iowa Children's Museum, so found out we like to craft, so we, we got together. And the folks at home, uh, they want to find out more about you guys, what you do, and uh, some of the stuff you sell. Uh, where can they find you online? They can look us up on Etsy. Just type in Industrial Glitter into the search margin, and you're good. Well, listen, thanks so much for talking with us and uh, this afternoon. And if you find a third dress that looks like this in my size, let me know. I'm very interested. <laughs> thanks, ladies. We'll do it. And we're here with Eric Johnson from T-Shirt Booyah. Great company, makes a lot of Iowa-centric stuff, celebrating this uh, state of ours that we also love so much. Thanks for talking with us, Eric. Tell us about your company and uh, how long you've been doing what you're doing. Oh, I, I've been doing this uh, personal screen printing since about 2007. I started selling to White Rabbit downtown a couple years ago and started doing craft fairs after that. Um, you know, I really like to support the local arts community and be a part of it myself and see my shirts on people around town. Well, I saw one of your shirts, which is the transplant shirt, because, you know, I see a lot of people with T-shirts and bumper stickers that says, Iowa native. Well, I'm not a native. I moved here uh, about eight years ago, but I love this town. What was the idea for that? You just saw the native ones and wanted to make something for folks like me? Well, yeah, and my wife is also a transplant. It was her idea, and she designed that one, actually. So she gets all the credit for that shirt. She's from Illinois originally. so. And we're simple people, and for us, a T-shirt's all we need. Well, if there's uh, folks who aren't out here today, they want to find uh, some of these shirts, where can they find you? I'm, I'm guessing you probably have a website someplace. Yes, I do. Uh, it's uh, T-shirt Booyah, B-O-O-Y-A-H.com, or at White Rabbit Downtown. Kendra from a business called The Bent Alchemist. She's actually wearing uh, one of her uh, products there. It kind of looks like a like steampunk, the jewelry. Uh, thanks for coming and talking with us, Kendra. Tell us about The Bent Alchemist and what kind of uh, neat products you make. Uh, I make uh, steampunk jewelry, which is kind of a Victorian um, uh, industrial gothic type of thing mixed all together. So. <laughs> and you're here in Iowa City? Uh, I'm in, I live in Cedar Rapids, yes, but I'm here in in Iowa City. Is this your first time at the What a Little Craft? This is eight years. I think I've been to three of them. I don't remember seeing uh, your booth before. No, this is the first time I've been here. This is the best show I've done yet. It's really fun. <laughs> For folks who uh, maybe aren't lucky enough to get out here today, do you have a website, something like that? People can go online and find out about the neat products you make and where to get a hold of you? Yeah, I do have an Etsy shop on Etsy.com. It's The Bent Alchemist, and it's A-L-K-H-E-M-I-S-T. So. Well, good luck, Kendra, and thanks so much for talking with us today. Thank you.
This one's got a dick on it. This one's uh, gonna kill you. Or fucking Kabe Kabe. What are we gonna do? Who's gonna win this brutality? I believe, Kobus, you're gonna choose this, aren't you? Yeah, this is tough. You just wanna reach down and grab that one up real good, don't you? No, I've actually had a gingerbread dick before. A couple okay. one on grass before. It was made in Necco wafers. Jeez. I don't know what to do. Jeez Louise, look at the little nuts on it though. Kevin, look at how big the dick is and how small the balls are. I know. There are a lot of jokes look I want to Look at that little fucking that. twig and berries. Yeah. Oh, that's a really good idea. Who can eat their gingerbread dude the fastest? Eat it, quit posing, eat it, eat it. Eat the food. They're Let's go, way. let's do it. Do, do it, do it. Someone play shit. drums, Josh, play drums. Let's go, play drums, Josh, I'll play bass. All right. Eat it, eat it, eat it. I don't it, care if you're it. diabetic. If you're on sugar busters. If you're doing a master cleanse. Eat it, quit posing, eat it, eat it. Eat the food. There are people starving right now. They'd love to have so much sugar in their bodies. But you just make a mockery of food. Let's go. Eat some food, you cowards. Yeah, just Keep jack on. that one off. You got him. You got him. Megan, you're Take doing really down. good. Come on, Jason. All right. All right, I'm Throw out the, the food at everyone. Don't throw the food. Don't you think, who okay, wants? who's got a tattoo? Raise your hand if you have a tattoo. <laughs> who that you paid for? All right, I'm gonna give okay. it. I'm gonna give it to this guy. You have to get a tattoo though. All right, you win. I'm gonna get some sour balls. Thank you guys so much for coming to What a Load of Crap A. Thank you so much for sticking around for the totally most brutal deathmatch we have ever had. Even though it was really loud, I know you appreciated it deep down inside. We'll see you guys next year. Thank you. Hey guys, just so you know, the more everybody cleans up, the less more people have to clean up. So if there's any garbage, put it in the garbage can. If there's tape on the floor, put it in the garbage can. If 
Put your tables on the racks. Put your chairs on the racks. Nod your head if you can hear me. One, two, three, all eyes on me. I am a teacher sometimes, not very literally. But you guys need to put your chairs and your tables on the racks. And that will cut down on like three hours of labor between four of us. So thank you. I hope everybody did make $10 million. That was intense, right? There was no lull. Should we talk about this later? Cover your baby's ears for 